In this lecture, we're going to talk about oil furnaces. Now, this is not meant to be an in-depth look. This is meant to teach you about the basics and the service of the oil furnaces. Fuel oils vary very considerably, generally contain about 85% carbon and 12% hydrogen. There are some additional elements that make up 3%. Green combustion, the carbon and hydrogen combine with oxygen in the air to produce carbon dioxide and water. Fuel oil grades are established by the U.S. Department of Commerce, grades confirmed to the American Society for Testing and Material Specifications. A very low sulfur content, important as sulfur turns into corrosive gases and liquids. Grades 1 and 2 are used in domestic and small commercial furnaces. Grade 1 is used in pot-type oil burners. Grade 2 is the most popular domestic fuel oil. It has a flash point of around 100 degrees and a viscosity of 37.9. Grades 4, 5, and 6 are used in industrial applications and provide slightly more heat per gallon. The main products of combustion are carbon dioxide and water in a vapor form. Some sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide are also present. Remember, carbon monoxide is very dangerous and there's numerous deaths over the year concerned with it. About 106 pounds of air are required for each gallon of grade 2 fuel oil consumed. About, therefore, 1,500 cubic feet of air must enter the building for each gallon burned. One gallon is approximately two hours of oil burner running time for an average home. Out of the 106 pounds of air, some 84 pounds is nitrogen, which does not burn. This is wasted heat as the nitrogen is warmed and passed up the chimney. About 22 pounds of it is oxygen, which combines with oil to form 20 pounds of carbon dioxide and 9 pounds of water, or steam. When perfect combustion occurs, about 15% of the gas volume is carbon dioxide. This level is not reached with oil burners. The heavy carbon molecules in the oil require excess air to burn completely. Excess air is the amount of air over the amount needed for complete combustion. This is frequently expressed as a percentage of air required for complete combustion. Excess air is fed into the combustion chamber of fire pot should be sufficient to produce carbon dioxide at about 10%. If 100% excess air is used, carbon dioxide content reduces to 7.5%. Carbon dioxide is measured first as it is easiest to measure. In a flame, the hydrogen always burns first. Once it burns completely, carbon starts to burn. This causes pulsation in the flame. The carbon first turns to carbon monoxide, then to carbon dioxide, which also causes a pulsation. Combustion gases vary. Excess air causes considerable nitrogen to go up the stack. Some oxygen, carbon dioxide, and steam and impurities also go up the stack. To account for losses, about 2,000 cubic feet of air is used per gallon of, carb of oil. Gases move up the stack by natural convection. Some are forced with a fan or blower. This is forced draft. And some are drawn up the chimney with induced draft. Flue gases must be kept warm or condensation will occur in the stack and flue and turn in in turn causing severe corrosion and damage. Sulfuric acid will corrode steels rapidly and discolors brick and stone. Good fuel additives will reduce sulfur dioxide by about 50%, keep the flue and chimney 65% cleaner, cause less opaque, that's visible smoke, and reduce soot blowing of tubes. A proper flame appears aluminous, mainly yellow. If there's a little incomplete combustion, the flame is a dull red or orange or red. Sulfur trioxide is more odorous than sulfur dioxide. It can be minimized by additives in higher temperatures. An oil furnace in good condition will not release visible smoke from the flue chimney or stack. Soot deposits and fly ash should be removed annually. Remove soot using air pressure, mechanical cleaning, vacuum cleaning, or chemicals. Oil sludge caused by bacteria may clog filters and nozzles. Bacteria will multiply if there's water in the oil. An additive can kill this bacteria. Fuel oil additives can keep the combustion chamber in good condition and reduce deposits in the heat exchangers and flue. Number two fuel oil viscosity changes between 50 and 100 at zero degrees to between 35 and 45 at 70 degrees. Gun type burners may have pumping and combustion problems when the oil is cold. Number two fuel oil distillate is being used in co commercial buildings and industrial to reduce air pollution. 
It burns more completely and cleaner than 3, 4, 5, and 6 oils. A distillate is a process, product of distillation vapors that's vaporized, then condensed, at the oil refinery. A gun burner is the most common type of oil burner. Units with gun burners also contain high efficiency burners, primary heat exchangers, secondary heat exchangers, combustion chamber, and high efficiency blower units. The gun type burner forces oil under pressure through an orifice of a controlled size. Oil is broken into finely divided particles that are atomized by, be, by being forced into a twisting, spiraling, turbulent air stream. The minimum atomization pressure is 75 psi. A small heat source, such as the electronic spark, turns some particles into gas, so burning will start. Pulsation in the oil furnace is caused by a positive pressure in the combustion chamber. The draft should be 0.02 inches water column. Too much positive pressure may be caused by too much air, air shutter open too far, chimney too small or partially blocked or not tall enough. Chimney must be two foot higher than the highest point of the building. This pulsating and positive pressure can be also caused by a faulty nozzle. Oil is mixed with the air and forced into the combustion chamber by the blower and the burner motor. Oil on the floor of the furnace room is dangerous. This could be caused by air leak in the oil suction line, loose compression fitting, or unions or pump seals. Compression fittings should never be used on an oil system. Check for the air in the system by connecting a pressure gauge. If the gauge needle fluctuates, there is air in the system. For small leaks, put the oil outlet tube in a bottle of oil. Bubbles indicate an air leak on the suction line. If soot is present in the boiler flue passages, clean the passage in the blower tubes. Clean the blower blades with a brush. Oil furnace drawbacks caused by delayed ignition may be the result of electrodes being improperly spaced, distorted pattern away from the electrodes. An oil nozzle in poor condition must be replaced with an exact replacement. Don't vary in size because it must meet the manufacturer's specifications. Large oil burner furnaces may have metal combustion chambers. Smaller furnaces use refractory cement liner for the combustion chamber. Many refractory liners are performed and then installed. Typical gun oil burner installation is shown in this picture. A is the length of the air tube. B is the refractory insulation. There are two types of gun type oil burners. One is a high pressure, the other is a low pressure. High pressure types, the oil is fed in the nozzle under pressures between 100 psi to 300 psi. The air is forced into the furnace through a tube surrounding the nozzle, and then the air is usually twisted in one direction. The nozzle is centered carefully in the housing. The ignition transformer provides a high voltage spark between the electrodes located near the front of the nozzle. In this picture, number 13 is the nozzle, 14 is your ignition, trans your electrodes, and then where 7 is is where the ignition transformer connects to the electrodes. Low pressure types uses oil at 1 to 4 psi. Oil is mixed with air prior to reaching the nozzle. The main parts of a gun burner, motor, oil pump, fans, nozzle, the choke, the air tube, and the ignition system. The choke is a tapered down or smaller opening at the end of the air tube. It is located just past the oil nozzle. Swirl strip increases the twist and the turbulence of the air, resulting in better mixing of oil spray and air for more efficient burning. Moving the choke closer to or farther from the nozzle can change the flame shape. The air tube has a disc mounted inside of it to disturb the airflow and create turbulence for better air mixing. This disc is called a static pressure disc. Oil moving through the nozzle travels through a small hole drilled at an angle to the nozzle that twists the oil. The oil burner motor is usually a split phase, sixth horsepower unit. It provides for the fan and fuel pump. The motor is electrically connected to the master oil burner stack control. The motor uses 120 volts, a alternating current. The motor may turn the fan and pump at 1750 or 3450 RPM, depending on whether the motor is a four pole or two pole. A 50 hertz input and a two pole motor turns the fan at 2850 RPM. 
That is not used in the United States. The fan is usually a radial type with adjustable air inlet openings. Adjust the opening until the flame is yellow. Some excess air is needed to ensure sufficient oxygen for proper combustion of oil and to allow for the decrease of airflow between furnace inspections and cleanings. Excess air slows down the evaporation of the oil drops. Adjusting the oil burner flame is difficult. A dirty nozzle, impingement, or oil leakage during the off cycle may appear as the flame needs more air when it does not. Instruments are the only way to check for oil burner for proper flame. Use a CO2 analyzer, oxygen analyzer, smoke test, or another method. Units should be checked and cleaned and adjusted each year. Safety devices are installed to avoid spraying unburnt oil into a furnace, which is dangerous. Safety devices can prevent continuous oil pump operation in case of ignition failure or if the oil flame goes out. There are several types of pumps. Two types are the gear type, and the other type is the rotary type. The single stage and two stage oil pumps are the most frequently seen in residential and commercial settings. The oil supply line carries fuel oil from the tank to an inline filter and inlet screen to the pump. From there it goes to a pressure regulator and relief valve. The pump rotates counterclockwise. Oil flows from the bottom to the top, from the top to the bottom. Oil leaves the lower center axis of the pressure regulator and passes the gun nozzle. Another design for the single stage rotary type fuel oil pump is shown here. The inlet is on the bottom left. The return or bypass is at the bottom right. The outlet is at the top left. This shows the principal operation for a two-stage fuel oil pipe with a two-pipe system. Part of the oil is returned to the fuel tank. Oil limitations determine if a single-stage or two-stage pump is used. Single-stage, up to vacuums of 7 inches. Two-pipe system, to it, 10 inches. Anything in excess of 10 inches, you must go to a two-stage pump.